Hello viewers and uh, welcome to another edition of Reminiscences where today I have the special privilege to have a conversation with Al Haji Umar Abdul Mutallab, very senior businessman and banker and an elder statesman who has also been a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Sir, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to begin by clarifying, even for myself, were you born in Katsina or in Funtua? A'uzu billahi sami'ul alim minna shaitanu rajim bismillahi rahmanu rahim wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam I was actually born in Kofa Saudi in Katsina uh, but my father being an employee of the native authority works department was posted from Katsina to Funtua and hence all my education elementary and so on started there but uh, I I mean I'm now claimed to be a Funtua man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the confusion everybody associates you with Funtua yes but then I saw somewhere that you are actually born in Katsina I was born and you are now Katsina. resident in Funtua I'm, 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 I mean since his movement to Funtua uh, we have been living there uh, May God bless him. He died there and he was buried there and uh, he had lived all his life there. And I've also always associated with myself with Funtua. But of course, we have all the relatives and Keith and Kin and so on back in, Fun in Kasina, which we still keep on in touch with. Some of them, we moved them from Kasina to Funtua and so on and so forth. So after your school in Funtua and in the locality, you also went to Barewa College, which was then the top uh, secondary school in the region. And more unusually, you also went to Ghana. Can you tell us a bit more about your schooling, what led to all those changes? Yes, after the, my elementary school in Funtua, uh, I went to the middle school, Kazena. Uh, at that time, um, you know, after you finish the primary school, you go to middle school. And it is from the middle school uh, in Kazena that um, we took the exam for the Barrio College. It, of course, at that time, it was called Gamon College, Zaria. And um, I was one of those who were successful. I was in Zaria Government College, which is now called Barrio College, for the full six years because my set was the last set to have spent six years. Any set coming before me and after me were only spending five years. And um, I had intended to study engineering because as I said my father was working in the NA works mm. uh, but I was very very close to late Hamza Zayyad mm. we were in the same house mm. in Barrio College and um, were you classmates or no he's, he's uh, two three years ahead of me right. but we seem to have uh, a very good understanding mm. and uh, as a matter of fact um, he was the one who started to study accountancy and he came to Lagos mm. for that uh, and during one of my holidays when I was still at uh, government secondary school Zaria I, I, I came all the way from Funtua to Lagos to meet him and uh, he really briefed me on you know, the fact that uh, accountancy is a profession that um, is very useful. You can be in any part of 
government, uh, private sector, what have you. Yes. So, with that in mind, when I applied for my scholarship, I applied to study accountancy. Mm. And at that time, there was no institution in Nigeria giving that kind of st uh, uh, studies. Mm. The only one which was available within West Africa was Achimota Business Administration Business College in, uh, in Ghana. Mm. And that is why I was sent to Ghana under the Northern Nigeria Government Scholarship. Mm. Um, I went with the late uh, Walen Kasuna Mutari Bello. Mm. We were there for one full year. Mm. During the peak of the uh, rule of uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah mm. and Osajifo. Mm. And um, after one year, the government of Northern Nigeria decided that we should be moved from Ghana to the United Kingdom. Mm. And so that's how I mm. went to Ghana. Yeah. How was it living in Ghana then for a, Niger a young man from Nigeria? Well, I think um, surprisingly there are lots of Nigerians in, in Ghana. Mm. As a matter of fact, um, the one of the eldest son of Ahmed Kumasi mm. was the Secretary General of CPP, the ruling party in Ghana at that time. Mm. And we managed to link up with him and he invited to invited us to many parts of uh, mm. Ghana. We went to Kumasi. What's his name? Uh, I, I can't remember the name, but uh, I know that he's the eldest son of Kumasi. Of, uh, uh, Al -Al -Al later, mm. uh, Ahmed older Kumasi. than Abidina Kumasi? Oh, much older, mm. much older. He, because he was, at that time, you know, he was already a fairly elderly person. And the, and the secretary of the, of the Kumkumas party in Ghana? Yes, he was the secretary general of the ruling party, CPP, mm. of Ghana. Mm. And uh, they had a conference or meetings and he invited to visit uh, mm. Kumasi and we went to Bran Afo and, mm. you know, we... We normally, myself, Mutari Bello, visit him quite often mm. during the weekends, you know, and so on. And he, from time to time, invites us to different parts of mm. Ghana just to see the country. So your choice of accounting was not influenced by family, because the general impression is that maybe you, you are coming from a rich family. So you, you studied accounting in order to continue building the family wealth? No, actually, I must admit that um, uh, the late Hamza Zayyad, the Wazir in Katsuna, was the one mm. who convinced me mm. that, um, you know, accountancy is, is a good profession. Mm. You can be in any sector, mm. public, private, you can be only also on your own. Mm. So that's how I studied uh, accountancy, mm. not because of family, mm. uh, uh, business or anything like that. You didn't so, inherit any wealth to begin with. It was so, sorry. You didn't inherit uh, a, a big uh, income to which well, which we needed to take care of. Well, I I mean uh, I must say my father uh, at that time was uh, a fairly wealthy person. Uh, you know, reasonable. Uh, you know, who have inherited uh, uh, some income. But, you know, these days, I mean, it will be really nothing to talk about. Mm -hmm. But uh, Alhamdulillah, he, you know, we're, very, we're living comfortably, you know, and uh, um, we, we, we did all the things that needed to be done and so on, assist him, the family and the relatives and things like that. So your career then after school in England was mostly in Kaduna. In the beginning, you are in various places in Kaduna. Um, was it still under sort of the mentorship of Al Haji Hamza Zayyad? Well, um, when I finished my accountancy studies on my own, I decided that I want to have a very practical experience. So I sought 
the assistance of the former managing managing partner of panel Fitzpatrick and Cruson at that time it was called mm. is now panel car and foster yes so i got in touch with him he was living in 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 the uk he is he was back from nigeria at the time he has a f- farm you know in in the city of london so i sought and he gave me the permission to opportunity to study to to be with them to get practical experience mm-hmm. and i was in the city of london for a good 30 months mm. to gain further experience after your studies after my studies mm. and it was just at the towards the end of my studies that um um i was approached by uh one consultancy firm that uh, they would like to recruit a chief accountant for the defense industries corporation mm. so in kaduna in kaduna i attended the interview and i was very successful at that time i think um uh late general hassan was the chief of army staff mm. uh while isuf gobir was the permanent secretary mm. they all welcomed the idea that um, you know a nigerian should be appointed to that position mm. uh it was a factory mainly managed by germans mm. the general manager was german the chief engineer and so on was mm. late ibrahim bai um, the um um you know one of the engineers also is a nigerian mm. but most of the technical staff were germans so i was there for i think about 2 years also mm. in the defense industries corporation so it was during my uh, stay in the defense industries corporation that again alhaj hamza zayad came in mm. <laughs> he convinced me that um the lots of lots of opportunities in the nndc mm. so it was at that stage that i was interviewed uh for the chief ex- chief accountant of the defense industry of the nndc it was at that time the managing director was uh, malam musa bello mm. Uh, so i was interviewed and i was stuck successful and um, i was offered the job and i stayed there for until the time when i became the general manager mm. is not the chief executive mm. musabella was still the chief executive mm. the general manager was one of the the number two position mm. in, the, in the organization and it was at that stage that then there was the uh the gowan ku you remember mm. the yes one gowan was toppled yes and uh, when he was toppled i was approached by late sheikh sir adwa mm. that um he has discussed with murtala mohammed and they would like me to be a member of the cabinet mm. were you are you surprised suddenly you are an accountant in well, quiet uh, for a statal <laughs> Yeah, thrust into yes, a mini- so, federal well, minister well i i i thought it was an opportunity because it's, it's service you know service to the nation mm-hmm. i warmly welcomed the idea and um i uh, holy you know, uh, you know sort of i was pleased with the appointment mm-hmm. and um during that time uh, late murtala mohammed was the head of state uh, you remember what happened of course yes. the in- unfortunate incident of february and uh, after him came of course obasanjo uh, obasanjo uh, it seems there was some kind of you are removed and then before you are appointed again in a different ministry no i was not removed hmm. i was reassigned right okay i was appointed minister of 
economic development and you know reconstruction mm. because that was the time when the com- country has just finished the civil war mm. and um, there was a ministry especially designed to look at the reconstruction of the country mm. uh dr adebayo of former mm. in adb was the secretary of the former minister mm. so i took over that position of minister of corporate of uh, uh, development reconstruction and development mm. and um it was after the coming of obasanjo yes. that i was reassigned mm. from minister of economic development and reconstruction to cooperatives and supply mm. cooperatives of supply is literally like the ministry of trade mm. because most of the issues being dealt with by by that ministry is more of domestic tra- trade mm. but there is also the added advantage of the fact that we wanted to develop a cooperative movement mm. and um, we have done quite a lot uh, throughout the uh, states of the federation yeah. and uh, so that is how i came into government mm. and um after i stayed uh, were you happy to leave or i mean is well, it, did I, you find it challenging for I, I, i was i was uh, very happy to to be in the government um i was there during the time when i felt uh, i think i have served enough so one afternoon i decided that i should see the president president babangida mm. and uh, i confided in him that i would like to leave were you serving up to babangida's time or, 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 this was obasanjo right no obasanjo mm. yes okay Probably. yes obasanjo yes yes obasanjo mm. so uh, he said uh, no he will not allow me to to leave mm. he will he will make a special uh what do you call it uh, uh you know that i should not leave mm. so i went around his colleague colli- very cl- close colleagues mm. and convinced them that uh, look i have worked enough in in lagos and uh, i think he should allow me to leave So why, why did you why did you want to leave you wanted to come back to kaduna or? well I, i i i have at that time stayed for close to 10 years in lagos mm. i mean initially as i said in the minister of uh, economy development mm. reconstruction and so on later on as a minister of cooperation and supply mm. and it was from there that the, the then uh chairman of UBA mm. late in Dalugi Victor in Dalugi invited me that I should come and be the executive vice chairman of UBA did the offer come before you left the minister position or before I left the minister position so maybe this is one of the reason why you wanted to leave government Oh, you had a yes I, i had an offer mm-hmm. i had an offer it was a good offer i i was invited to paris we met with the uh, top executives of the uh, then bank de paris mm-hmm. bank de paris bank de paris the you know and uh, we, they all agreed that yes i should i should be considered for the job mm-hmm. so when i came back i had an offer and i was appointed immediately initially as executive vice chairman mm. but almost immediately after mm. i was appointed the substitute managing director mm. so this was all during the time of uh, babangida obasanjo as uh, as you left the minister ministerial position yes yes you yes i left the ministerial position when i when i left for the uh, uba mm. that was still jorin obasanjo yes 
Yes. But you stayed so long, for 10 years in UBA. Yes. Uh, that is actually stretched into the period of uh, Bangida before, before you retired. That's right. Um, tell me about your effort to start a new bank. I mean, after UBA, you were in first bank, but you are chairman. Now you also you made this effort to start the Jais Bank, which is new, unique in the sense that it's Islamic-oriented bank. What are the challenges of that? Well, uh, actually, it all started when um, the late son Abacha was appointed the Amir al-Hajj for Nigeria for that year. Mm. I happened to be part of the delegation that went to Jeddah and got so kind were invited to the ceremony of the Islamic Development Bank which they host to many many countries mm. around the globe. So I you know see the opportunity to to um, You know, the, I think um, it was um, So you were with the uh, IDB then, Islamic Development Bank? Yes, we were with IDB. You met the officials there? We met the officials and they told us about how this bank operates and I was fascinated. Hmm. It is a uh, non-interest bank. Mm. Uh, it's uh, in accordance with the Sharia, no, no interest and so on. So since that time, when I came back, I developed interest mm. in that uh, institution. Mm. So I made many contacts with the officials there. Uh, the then president of the bank, uh, Dr. Muhammad Amun Ali was very, very cooperative. Mm. We also have a very senior Nigerian working at that time, mm. in the person of Professor Dr. Adebi. Mm. Uh, and um, through him, we began to get a lot of information of what needs to be done mm. to set up that kind of bank. One of the things that we have tried to also do is to convince Nigeria to be a member of the, of the IDB. Mm. Although, although we are members of the OIC, mm. we are the only country at that time which was not a member of the IDB. So we are not getting all the benefits that other countries are getting. So we are looking at it from two aspects. How to set up a bank which is sub fully supported by IDB because they are shareholders in Jai's Bank, and at the same time for Nigeria to be a member of the IDB, which they are now uh, the probably one of the fifth, sixth largest shareholders in the bank now. Mm. So that is how uh, the interest developed. It was a lot of effort, a lot of traveling, a lot of discussion, a lot of... Uh, we have learned a lot of things with myself and... Um, Mr. Fab Bintubi, who was mm. the first managing director. Mm. Uh, we have gone to all the nooks and corners of this country mm. and also all the nooks and corners of Middle East, mm. US, mm. and what have you. And mm. all looking for investors and uh, people who can mm. assist us in yeah. setting up the bank. I must say that I have heard many shareholders of the bank is expressing their disappointment at the slow progress of the bank. I don't know whether you have heard this and what, what you say. About I have heard it. I have heard it. Um, well, you know, we are the first uh, to come on board mm. uh, and... Um, we should obviously have taken the first mover advantage, mm. but um, I think there are certain things that couldn't happen, unfortunately. Mm. 
we have to change MDs mm. because the first MD was from Bangladesh. Mm. Because when we asked the IDB to give us reference to who they would like to be our technical partners, mm. they recommended Islamic Bank of Bangladesh. Mm. So the, the first MD was from Bangladesh. Mm. When he came, he didn't know the situation, he mm. didn't know the condition of the country. Mm. After some years, we have no alternative but to ask him to go. Mm. Then we appointed a Nigerian. Mm. And so that is how those things, you, mm. know, you know, really we, we had a, should I say, the start was not very smooth. Mm. But Alhamdulillah, now we are home and dry. We, yeah. are, we have started making profits. Mm. Of course, we are not declaring the kind of uh, dividends that the major banks are doing, but mm. at least it is something. Mm. The important thing is that uh, once you can get some baraka out of whatever mm. dividend it is, Alhamdulillah, that yeah. will be sufficient. What, what keeps you going? You are 81. But it seems you are still working. You are still running your business. Most people your age probably would uh, have uh, left the scene. What, what keeps you going? What is the motivation? Well, I, I, think, I feel that, um, you know, the more you keep being active, you know, the more you feel at least the ability to do a lot of things. And God in his infinite mercy has given us the age and um, we continue to work. Uh, I mean, uh, I come to office, I come to do a lot of things. I, of course, have stopped making a lot of traveling. Mm. But at least within Nigeria, within the South Zone, Alhamdulillah. So you don't travel abroad now? No, no I do travel trees? abroad. No, I do travel abroad. In mm. fact, uh, Last uh, three months, we were at the we went to Uz, also to Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Yes, mm. to attend the meeting of the annual general meeting of IDB, mm. which is consisting of some 55, 56 member countries. Mm. It's a very long way from here, but mm. we were there. Yes, and um, you know, since the flights are all, uh, you know. I'm talking of really local traveling. Mm. I, 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 I travel to Katsina, I travel to Lagos. Mm. But, um, you know, traveling by road is mm. something <laughs> that yes. I don't do much. Um, many lists of the rich men in Nigeria put you there. I've seen one that says you are the 11th richest man in the country. Um, do, do, you, do you think that's an... Uh, are you, are you surprised by that? Because, well, uh, I mean, uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm not a poor man. <laughs> 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 but neither will I say I'm the one of the 11 richest person in Nigeria. Well, that's what the list is saying. Well, I mean, uh, it is all the perception. Uh, I thank God for what he has given me. And... Uh, the way I deploy it and so forth, I'm grateful to him. But I will not consider myself one of the 11th richest men in Nigeria. Why? By any chance? By any chance? But you're a banker. You know. You know. You know the. You but, know the, the market way. But uh, uh, I know that um, I am keeping my self above water. You know. <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 to pay my bills and so on and so forth, you know, and trying to assist as much as one, one can. Hmm. But uh, to say that um, I'm one of the, so is the, is the, is the, I think, uh, this, I, I think this happened to have been during my son's uh, situation. Yeah, this incident, yes, yes, yes yeah, it's a that, media. Uh, mm. that, uh, you know, he is one of the richest men in Nigeria, mm. blah, blah, blah. Mm. But um, even at that time, even though I was the chairman of First Bank, yes, I have some shares in First Bank, but I'm not the richest man. In the, in, in, I'm not one of the richest men. Mm. There are many, many people much, much richer than myself. Yeah. 
But, but I'm, I'm pleased with it like that. Yeah. But do you, do you enjoy making money? Is it something that really well, gives you pleasure? I, 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 I do try to make money so that I can use it to assist mm. relations, friends and what have you. Mm. But uh, after all, we came with nothing mm. and we're going back with nothing. Mm. So that is the way I look at it. Mm. Uh, I make money just in order to keep myself in a good condition, my family, my relations and so on and so forth. Mm. But it is not to accumulate. Yeah, but you do have assets. Oh, yes. I do. Houses, estates, companies. I mean, that's the kind of thing that goes into this valuation. Well, uh, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it's <laughs> liquid. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, most of these things, it is all a question of if you get a stock exchange to do a valuation mm. and, to, and then you equate yourself with what, how much proportion of that mm. company do you own and so on and so forth. But I, I, I don't do that at all. So you, your mind doesn't go to look how much is my net worth? No. And, uh, I only do it once in a year, an estimated wealth which I own, which I would have to pay the compulsory one fortieth mm. of that, uh, you know, to the needy, mm. to the assigned uh, beneficiaries. Yeah. You alluded to the case of your son, uh, Umar Farouk. Are you are you still are you in touch with him? Is yes. Something you yes, we he he phones us um, two times, sometimes three times in a month. Mm, no, we cannot phone him, mm. but he is the one who who can phone us, mm. and we still speak. As a matter of fact, his mother and uh, one of his brothers and one of his sisters were with him just about two three weeks ago. Mm. They visited him. Mm. And, um, so he's allowed visitors, you're able to go and... Yes, mm. yes. Of course, it is under very strict uh, mm. uh, prison guidelines. Mm. But um, we keep on praying, mm. the Almighty Allah, that one day, mm. maybe before my lifetime, mm. you know, we'll see him back. But mm. it's a situation whereby he has uh, three lifetime sentences. Mm plus 40 years, mm. so, so we get a lot. It is uh, a lot, mm. so, but only the Almighty Allah mm. will, uh, you know, bring us into a situation mm. of seeing him in this world, mm. and, you know, in, with his mm. siblings here in Nigeria. Yeah. What else do you do beside work, beside your business? Do you have any other activities that keep you uh, busy? Oh, I have a lot of readings to do. Mm. Um, the, the Holy Quran, a lot of the various Islamic books and so on and so forth. And also the lives of um, the Sahabas and so on and so forth. And also uh, Holy Prophet Muhammad and so forth. These are what really I do most of the time. I don't do any other thing. Mm. Do you do any exercises, any any hobbies, with, uh, physical? I, I, I do attend um, um, a doctor's, uh, you know, appointment because, you know, at our age, you know, the bones are quite weak mm. in some yes, 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 mm. the cartilage will have been worn out mm. and so on. So from time to time I do go to, in fact, um, I think now it's twice a week, mm. and so, so twice a month. Mm. I do visit um, a doctor who gives me some, you know, um, treatment mm. um, just so that um, I, I'm not completely you know, invalid mm. sort of um, mm. ability to walk and to do a lot of other exercises and so forth. 
What well, remarkable thing about your career is that unlike other Nigerians who, who are successful in business, you have avoided politics altogether. Or do you do it uh, sort of <laughs> underground without <laughs> our no, noticing? No, I, um, um, I, 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 I don't do politics. I, my father was a politician. I know how he... No, but I have avoided politics altogether. Why? Well, I think um, I'm sure it will be a better, you know, game in the future. But right now, you know, this is really a game that um, the the players are, can be very, very dirty. You know. Um, if you want to be an opponent, I mean, they tear you to pieces and this and that and so on. But I'm sure in the future it will be a much better, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, should I say, arrangement. Mm. But, Have you uh, been approached by uh, politicians to get involved, maybe financing and other things? Well, of course, uh, the... Uh, Lots of lots of that. Mm. All one can do is to do the little one can do, mm. and um, but to go to the you know should I say the meeting and where mm. you drive on the drum and so and speak. Mm. I, I I don't do that. Mm. I don't do that. Are you worried about uh, the country? I mean, people, I mean, or everybody must be, but you know, some people have a longer perspective of things. You have seen the past, you have seen how things have developed. Do you feel we are making progress with, with the way things are going? Well, I really, one is very worried about um, the current situation. Um, although the government is trying to do their best, but it looks as if the armed banditry and so on is really trying to overpower the the authorities. Mm. I mean, uh, I mean, um, can we imagine? I mean, in the good old days, I mean, people travel to different parts of the country in the night because mm. it's very cool. Everything is, you know, calm. Mm. But now, even in the daytime, I mean, there is no road that is very free, mm. because anything can happen any time. Mm. We only pray and hope that um, the authorities could do more. They mm. are doing a lot already, mm. but that they could do more to arrest the situation, and we could pray to the Almighty Allah mm. to, you know, really bring to the should I say the those who are doing this thing to really stop this sort of thing? It's, mm. it's very, um, it's very Nigerian. It's unbelievable that mm. one would think that this sort of thing can happen in Nigeria. Yeah. We have heard of it in some other parts of the world, but it has now become, you know, the, the end thing. Mm. Unfortunately, even between neighbors, mm. I mean, you know. If a neighbor wants to get some money, he will arrange for one of his children or one of his mm. to be kidnapped mm. and uh, ask for ransom. This is very, very mm. worrying, very annoying, very disturbing. Mm. But um, I think God, in His infinite mercy, you know, will, there's nothing that He cannot stop. Mm. You know, before the whole thing gets out of hand. Yeah, but as an elder. Have you had the chance to make your input to the government, you and a group of elders? Have you have yes, you been consulted yes, and made yes, made? Yes, we, we, mm. we do have um, we do have a small group of mm. uh, about five or six of us who do have an opportunity to go and make a presentation, mm. uh, but we have not been doing this now for the first maybe one year or so. Mm. Because the thing is getting out of, you know, it is happening so repeatedly. Mm -hmm. It's true. 
you know, mm. the thing you hear this and then the next one is this. It's, it's really very, very f- frightening. But we mm. hope and pray mm. that uh, his God in his infinite mercy will mm. put up stop to all this because there is nothing beyond him. Mm. Mm. Let me ask you about family life. You, you, have, you have a large family. Um, what, what, uh, what lesson have you learned from, from, from family life in general? Well, I have um, two wives um, and um, we have uh, 11 children. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about six of them. No, 13 children, six of them boys and mm-hmm. 11 and seven girls. Mm-hmm. We have given them all the best education we mm-hmm. can. Most of them have been graduates, some of them with even a master's degree and so on and so forth. I mean, that is the best you can give to a child, uh, education, because if you educate a person, you have given him the opportunity to develop himself or herself, isn't it? So... um, I, I I must say that um, you know we, we, we have um, quite a number of them working in some institutions in Nigeria, including mm. one working for the IDB in London in, mm. in, the, in, the, in Jeddah, mm. and um, a lot of them in one of them in government of Kazana State, mm. so on. So we. We look forward to, you know, them developing themselves mm. to be on their own because um, we have been giving them a, a lot of support. Mm. But I think that the time has now come for them to even give us support as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but do you see yourself at some point, maybe completely retiring from the business and handing it over to the younger you know, who wants to run? I am I'm trying to do that right now. Mm. I'm trying to do that right now. Because um, out of our very many companies which we are either wholly owned or partly owned, we try to involve them. Mm. We try to make sure that they are part of the board and so mm. on and so mm. forth mm. and um, but you know business is very tough <laughs> <laughs> I do I know it is, it, is, <laughs> it is very very tough it is so you tough. find that you need to be there a little bit <laughs> yes. To, yes yes it's very very tough I think you have hit the nail on the head mm. when you said at the meeting we had uh, the Eredwa Center that yes <laughs> We started this uh, uh, you know, c- citizen, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But uh, citizen magazine, yeah. It, it is very mm. tough, mm. very tough. So I must say that um, I congratulate you also. Thank you, sir. Thank you on mm. your achievements. Your, you know the fact that uh, you have even progressed to now a TV station. You know, which shall part from the newspaper. Mm. I mean, may the Almighty Allah give you all the support and, and assistance. And thank you. Mm. Let me ask one last question, which which I don't know if uh, you want to reflect back. If there, are, if you look back at your life, long life, accomplished life, will there be things that you will say, "Look, if I have a chance again, I will not do it." Are there things that you did, that you, uh, important things that you think you, you could have done differently? And you will, you will then warn younger people that these are things that uh, one should watch out or avoid. Well, um, um, <coughs> one thing one would like to say is this, that um, before you go into business with anybody, 
you should be very, very careful. Because um, it is a way of soldering a lot of friendship, but mm -hmm. also it's a way of, you know, should I say, breaking up the relationship mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. So, I think, um, quite honestly, um, from what one has experienced over the years, um, one has to be very, very careful. I'm not saying that you should not, you should do everything yourself. Mm. You should own a company 100%, no. Mm. But before you bring people on board, mm. you should really have a very thorough understanding mm. of their background mm. and so on and so forth. So that um, if something goes wrong, mm. at least there is somebody you can go back to and mm. say, look, this is what is happening. Can you so talk to A, B, mm. or C, or so on and so forth? This is what I, you know, I, I have um, gone through many mm. different businesses and mm. companies and organizations. And um, some of them are very successfully mm. operating and so on. But at the same time, there are some that you know, you you wish that you have not have associated yourself with that sort of mm. thing. Mm. Thank you, Alhaji Umar Abdul Mutallab, for this very insightful uh, conversation. Uh, we wish you long life and uh, more time, less time to live with your family and run your business. And uh, viewers, I hope you have benefited from uh, uh, what uh, you have heard. And you'll join us again in another edition of Reminiscences. Thank you.